let's try to uh, do this one together. Um, it asks, write a complete mechanism for the following reaction. Show all intermediate structures, formal charges, and electron flow using the curved arrow convention. So for me, I <coughs> always, when I'm doing my mechanisms, like to think about them, of course, stepwise, like you're supposed to with mechanisms. But um, one thing that oftentimes students don't like to do, and they really should to keep account of all the electrons, is just to put all the lone pair electrons first off, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Put my lone pair electrons on my VR, just to remind myself, so I can get those formal charges much easier, okay? Sure. The other thing I want you to realize, and you probably already do, especially since we talked a little bit about it, is that this is saying that these are actually two separate reactions. So one of the reactions is happening after the other reaction. So in actuality, the KOH is there by itself, reacting with the uh, starting material. And then after that reaction happens, then we add the HBr, and then that reacts with whatever intermediate we've made in there, okay? Because of course, if we put the KOH and the HBr together in there, they're just going to react with each other because that's a strong base and a strong mass. Okay, does that make sense? Yep. So don't even think about doing that, okay? The last thing I want you to remember is um, you're not going to get to this in one step, okay? So this is a, series, a sequence of going through arrows and uh, intermediates and stuff like that, okay? So if you're trying to do all these arrows in one, that's totally going to be wrong, okay? So don't do that. Um, so what I want you to do now is, if we've got, if we've taken the product of memory, okay, what we're going to do is erase this stuff, okay, and then, um, what do you say, uh, go through the mechanism. So, write down the product, and then we'll start working. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be reacting the starting material with is um, potassium hydroxide. So what do we know about potassium hydroxide? Can anybody tell me? It's a strong base. Strong base. Okay, what part of the potassium hydroxide is the strong base part? The OH. OH. Okay, so what does that mean about the K? The K is just a what? Spectator ion. Spectator ion. So, when we have the spectator ion in the mechanism, do we even really have to put it in there? No. No, no. so don't even, if it messes with you, don't put it in there, okay? Because it's just spectator. It's not going to do anything in the mechanism. In fact, I don't like to put it in there. So let's just erase it and just put the OH minus. Because that's the important part, okay? What did we say OH minus was? It's a base. A strong base, right? So what do bases do? They uh, attack or they uh, react with uh, deprotonate stuff, right? Yeah. Yes, and that's what you were trying to do, right? <laughs> okay. So where is the where is the acidic proton on this? It's going to be at one of the alpha, alpha protons to where the bromine is. Okay. So more than likely, we're going to want to form the most stable product because this is going to be a E2 reaction, right? So the most stable product is the Zaitsev product, right? Remember we talked about that yesterday? Okay. So which one would be more stable if we make the alkene there or the alkene there? The Left or right? Right. The right one there. Why would that one be more stable? More, more hydrogen. Substitution. It's not hydrogens, though. It's more what? Substituted. Substituents, but carbon atoms. Okay? Carbon atoms. So anyways, let's talk about the mechanism. So it's that hydrogen there that we're going to need protonate. Okay, so what are we going to show? The arrow starting from where? The lone pair on the oxygen. Yeah, the lone pair on the oxygen. Remember, arrows always start from lone pairs, double bonds, okay? So one arrow, two arrows, three arrows. Okay, this is an E2 reaction. We've got a strong base, okay, and we got a... Alkyl halide, that's going to go E2. So that's one step. And we get to that intermediate that we were talking about. Okay? So that's the end of the first step. 
Now we now we're going to if you want to you can also put your H2O just to confirm that that happened and then your VR minus. Okay? So now it says to do what? Add HBR, right? Okay, so what are we adding that HBR to? We're just adding it to this, okay? This VR minus isn't going to do anything in that reaction. This H2O is not going to do anything in that reaction. So if they confuse you, just very So like that. We're adding HBR, but we're not just going to have to say HBR, right? We're going to put a bond in between. And on the VR, we're going to show our lone pair electron. Like that. Okay? So, what kind of reaction is this going to be? It's an addition. An addition. Do you remember specifically? It's called a hydrobromination sure. reaction, right? And so when we're going to do this, what kind of molecule is HBR? It's a strong, strong, strong acid. acid. So what happens to strong acids? They get deprotonated, okay? So the base is clearly going to be the alkene. Which carbon on the alkene is going to take the hydrogen away? Is it going to be the, the bottom carbon or the top carbon? The bottom. Bottom carbon. Why is that? Uh, because it's a Markovnikov addition. Yeah, so you're going to do Markovnikov addition on this one, okay? So Markovnikov addition, remember that says the hydrogens go to the more side with more hydrogen, okay? So that's what we're going to show. And I really like to show the arrow actually going through there, just for y'all's sake, okay? So like that. Are we cool with what we've done there? Try to draw that product on your own and see so that's just going to be, it's not going to be the final product, right? It's just going to right. be a product for that in the action or an intermediate. And see if you get the same thing I get. So remember, we had a hydrogen here. Right now we have two hydrogens there, okay? But we also have our VR that has the three lone pairs plus another lone pair. So now it's a VR minus, like that. Okay? Does that make sense? Yep. So we've got the carbocation intermediate, tertiary carbocation that's stable. It's not going to uh, do any like hydride shift or anything like that. So the hopefully obvious mechanism is the nucleophile attacks the electrophile, and that's going to give us our final product. If I remember correctly, is that molecule yep. Okay, so that was uh, essentially a synthesis problem, right? You did a two-step synthesis, but you showed the mechanism of the synthesis. Okay. So it's kind of a combination problem. Are there any questions on this particular problem? I know there was a lot of stuff that we went through. We cool? Yes. Okay.